good news. I discovered we have a submarine mode. We noticed. We're trying to get back to the surface. I thought we were trying to make toast. Oh, that's easy. We just need to coagulate our charged propolifters. Warning. Code red. Warning. Warning. Let me guess. We're at the bottom of the ocean. Our propolifters aren't charged. We're out of jam? No. Low phytoplankton levels have been detected in the water. You know, phytoplankton. Tiny plants. Okay, phytoplankton provide about 50% of the world's oxygen. You've never heard of it? Wow, 50%? Yes. Like all plants, plankton take in carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. And there's normally a lot of plankton doing this. But I've detected that the Earth now has 40% less plankton than my last reading in 1950. So that's not good. Short answer, no. Long answer, no, you ignorant hippo. I'm a polar bear. So instead of oxygen, maybe we can just learn to breathe carbon dioxide. Oxygen isn't the only thing phytoplankton provide. They're also a source of food for krill, a very tiny shrimp-like creature. And krill are in turn a source of food for some of the largest animals on the planet, such as baleen whales. Can't the whales eat something else? You're really not a very bright hippo, are you? Mm. They sound sad. Ooh, we gotta help those big fish. Okay, A, whales are mammals, not fish, and B, thanks for volunteering. <laughs> you need to swim this tube up to the ocean surface. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, oh hey, oh, what are you, hey, ay, 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 ay. What's with the tube? Obviously, you've never seen a krill-producing machine before. It's not a krill-producing... Okay, let's try this. As I told you, whales feed on krill, krill feed on phytoplankton, and phytoplankton feed on nutrients in the water. Like all plants, phytoplankton also needs sunlight for photosynthesis. This means that they can only live near the surface of the ocean, where the sun's rays can reach them. But obviously the phytoplankton will eventually use up all of the nutrients up there. Obviously. Fortunately, there are more nutrients in the water beneath them. But the warmer the surface water is, the more it will float on the colder, denser water below and prevent the nutrient-rich cold water from reaching the plankton. So, the plankton starve. But hasn't surface water always been warmer than deeper water because of the sun? Yes, but previously the temperatures were similar enough that wave action could mix things up. Unfortunately, the surface water has now become too warm, so there's little mixing going on. So, what do we do? One, we need to stop with your ridiculous hippo questions, and two, we need to mix the cold and warm water up. A little vacuum action should do the trick. Allow me. I meant this one. It's getting greener up there. Here come the krill. And now the whales are feeding. Wow, they're really going to town. Yes, whales eat about 8,000 pounds of krill per day during their feeding season. Who knew one tiny little plant could affect the entire planet in such a big way, producing so much oxygen and food? And that isn't all. Phytoplankton also remove the excess carbon dioxide from the air that humans have created by burning so much coal and oil. Without enough phytoplankton, we end up with too much carbon dioxide, which causes global warming and kills off even more phytoplankton. How ironic. Indeed, Mr. Hippo. Indeed. Polar bear. Thanks for the tip. And now take us home, please, computer. Computer? Hmm, I think the battery's dead. Oh well, I can program the coordinates myself. Next stop, polar bear's home in the Arctic Circle. I'll believe that when I see it. Ah, good riddance. I finally got back to the ocean and I'm not going anywhere. Ooh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs>